And so self-compassion is yeah. just such an integral piece to all of this. Like you can't hate yourself into the, the, the state of being that you want to experience mm. in life. You can't do that. You can't hate yourself to where you want to be. You can't be angry at yourself. You can't be mad at yourself um, and actually get to where you want to mm. be because you'll actually never, you'll never be satisfied and proud of what you accomplish until you're satisfied and proud of who you are. All right. My dude, it's been Please. a long time since you've been on a microphone, right? It's been like it 45 been. minutes. We had um, our daughter, we had our first child and I've just like put away everything. You're getting an exclusive everybody. <laughs> so let me introduce today's speaker. First of all, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, welcome to October. Um, hard to believe. Wow. This guy right here, what I love most about this group, what we've been doing so far this year is uh, the community, but then also each month bringing on somebody that has made an impact in my life, therefore mm. has kind of cascaded into my content, has been on the podcast, people who have really imprinted on me and what I find valuable and how I've been able to grow. And then everybody here is here because of, they connect with something that I've done or put out sure. or somebody that we've talked about or had on. And what I'm most excited to talk to you about, man, is just like, so much of what I've gone through in the last two years, I give a lot of credit to people oh. like you that have been in my life for like this word keeps coming up and that's capacity. Mm. I, I've told you mm. like May, like I, the last couple of years, my wife and I, for those of you who don't know, May is my wife. Um, like I've like re fallen in love with her in so many ways Come on, dude. because of this like capacity. Goosebumps. I'm like realizing this form of capacity of like, what I mean by that is someone's ability to hold space for love that you don't know you're going to get yet, mm. or just like even in friendship. But this guy, this teeny tiny little man, <laughs> um, has been another capacity person for me. And secondary to that, like you have been able to stand firm so much in your choice to keep going inward and mm -hmm. finding more and more about yourself and who you really are and how you want to show up in the world and leading by that example. Like that is what I'm after most in the world. And I think I would agree with everybody here. If you're new, first of all, welcome. Uh, we got quite a few repeat offenders, but um, that's, I think ultimately what we're after in this group is like overcoming things in life, overcoming things in work, but ultimately we're after trying to get continuously closer and closer and closer to ourselves. Who is that version? Yeah. Um, so that's my long winded way of saying I love that. hello. Right. I feel touched. And Thank welcome. You. <laughs> it's a real touch. Um, but so that's why Caleb Campbell is here with us today, everybody. Um, and he's just an incredible human being. Thank you. He's one of my closest friends uh, and just been an incredible friend to me and my wife and like our community here in LA. Um, but you got a wild backstory. And I would love just take a couple minutes and kind of Give us the high level uh, before we dive into yeah, 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 yeah. all the stuff. Yeah, it's just been a, a wild journey first. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Um, I'm speaking in LA um, yeah, today and tomorrow. And so we were able to do this in person, which is great. Uh, my wife and I left LA about 18 months ago, um, but it's always nice to get back. Yeah. The SoCal yeah. weather, you can't beat it. <laughs> um, but a high, high capacity or like high level story. Um, just have constantly, I've been somebody that's lived with this kind of debilitating ache in my life. Um, and it's this ache, the way that I would say it is like this deep awareness that something is missing mm. or that it's not enough in life. And for so many years of my life, my attempt to drown out the ache came through my ruthless ambition or my fierce, my dogged determination, my willfulness per se. Um, and that did me well. Mm. <laughs> like it, it turned uh, this, this source of fuel in, into motivation. Um, that egg became a source of fuel and it, it turned into motivation and that motivation took me you know, to West Point um, and at the military academy where I'd become you know, my sophomore year, one of the top collegiate football players I'm um, in all of college in Division One college football. I don't um, even sports, and I know that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so I played strong safety in college, yeah. and then uh, I was the number six strong safety in all of college football after my sophomore year. Uh, but of course, if you're familiar with West Point, then you know that 
after you graduate the academy, you're good, you're good. sorry, after you graduate the academy, you have um, a five year service obligation, right? Your commission as an officer in the United States Army. Well, my sophomore year, the DOD, the Department of Defense, created this new policy that essentially said that if you are good enough to play a professional sport, you can serve and play simultaneously. They'll let you swap out, basically. Yeah, let you, let, they, they, you'll just serve in a different yeah, yeah. The capacity. <laughs> ah, there's the word. Um, and as you can imagine, a lot of people supported this, but then a lot of people criticized this. And um, my, my senior year, I ended up getting selected. Um, and also my senior year, and this wasn't the first time that it happened, but there were moments uh, leading up to this uh, this moment in my life, there or this time in my life where I could feel the 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 weight of crisis will always kind of uh, reflect the cracks in your identity. Mm -hmm. And leading up to this point in my life, there were moments of crisis that kind of highlighted some cracks in my identity. Um, you know, the, the, that fractured self started to surface. But for so many years, I could hide it behind my performance in life, mm -hmm. my success in my life, my facade. Uh, but my se senior year after I got drafted, all of that pressure, because I was just drafted on national television, everybody watched my story unfold, everybody knows my name, I'm the, you know, essentially I'm the, the second player in the history of the academy to ever get selected, and, and I'm the first one ever given the permission to go and play. Damn, in, into the NFL. In, into the NFL. Yeah, yeah. And so that created so much pressure and stress in my life, and at this time, I didn't have the emotional tools or the awareness. Um, and also, from my, you know, past experiences, uh, I was taught to believe that authenticity and vulnerability were my enemy. Mm. And so I didn't have the courage to really open up and start talking about some of the internal struggles and challenges that I was feeling and experiencing. And so when I got into the NFL, the NFL, I would often say is kind of this like this, you know, this thumb that applied just enough pressure to my life that all of the shit, you know, just began to surface. And because I didn't have the tools or the awareness to deal with it, um, I began to cope in really unhealthy ways. And so here I am in the middle of my childhood dream and I am, if just to be candid, I am actively trying to end my life through substance abuse mm -hmm. because I don't have the courage to walk away. I'm afraid to walk away because the NFL football is the way that I found my acceptance, my belonging, you know, it's the source of validation in life. So it was so much more than a game. It was like the oxygen in my lungs. It was essentially like the blood in my veins. Mm -hmm. um, and so walking away felt like death. Um, and then it got to the point where I, I realized if something didn't change, it changed soon. Um, it was only a matter of time before I was no longer here. But that that ache that I alluded to, you know, I, I realized that in the NFL, despite accomplishing my dream, that ache was still there. It mm -hmm. still wasn't enough. There was still something missing in my life. And so still air quote here, making it. Yeah. There was still this void. There's still 100% this void. And I couldn't. And, and I think that void reflected back to me that there must be something intrinsically broken in me. Like there's, I'm just wired differently and there's something wrong with me. And so here I am, I've spent, you know, the majority of my life trying to outrun, outperform this ache. Um, but it's now at the point where it's almost cost me my life mm -hmm. and something has to change. And that's when I walked away from the NFL and I, I know long story made short, I, I moved to Canada and I became a janitor of an organization. Um, and I, I slept. That's not another football. It's not like the Canadian. No, right? no. It's, I, it's I, I literally thing. I found yeah. an organization on Twitter that uh, put to words because I didn't have the language for the experience that I was going through. Now I can look back and say, oh, I was I was grieving and I was letting go. And there was this metaphorical death that I was stepping into. And this organization, they had put to language that experience. They put language to that experience. And they're talking about how like we are all created to step into new life. Mm -hmm. But the prerequisite of stepping into new life is first death. Um, and they're talking about this metaphorical death, right? Letting go and surrendering all the things that no longer serve you or no, you know, all the unmet expectations and the unfulfilled dreams, all the ideas of who you think you should be and where you think you should be in life. And what does it look like to let that go, to grieve, to surrender, and actually to accept who you are, where you are. And so they are putting language to that story and that experience. Um, and I felt so seen. I was mm -hmm. like, holy shit, this is my life. This is what's happening to me. And suddenly it made sense. And so I packed up my bags. Literally, I didn't know a soul there, and I just knew I was supposed to be there. 
And so I left the NFL playing in front of 80,000 people to traveling to Canada, walking into this organization, knocking on the uh, the receptionist door and saying, hey, this might sound kind of strange, mm. but I found y'all on Twitter and I feel like I'm supposed to be here. Can I can I you know talk to somebody? And they said, absolutely. And that night I moved into their basement of a, a boiler room Damn. where I slept on a cot for about four and a half, almost five years. Uh, and I, I cleaned bathrooms, I washed windows and I swept floors in exchange for free therapy. And um, that radically transformed my life. And I feel like I got a taste of what freedom feels like. Um, and that's really like kind of just started this journey of kind of falling forward and just mm. really what does it look like to reconnect to the knowing inside of me and to own that knowing and to live from that knowing, um, even when it doesn't make logical sense, um, even when other people don't understand what I'm doing and why mm. I'm doing it. Um, it's just been learning how to tr- how to hear, how to create capacity, mm. how to hear, and how to trust that inner knowing and just saying yes to that journey. Dude, what was it like finally feeling free? And maybe yeah. by like a show of hands of everybody, I, I want to first and foremost say like thanks to people like you and the work that you do and how you've shown up in the world and being so steadfast in your work and yourself, it has given me permission to put in the work to like, I, I think I told you like two years ago, I turned 35 and I felt like for the first time I introduced myself to myself and introduce myself to the world. And for the last two years, I've been living, acting, breathing, working out of freedom. And I I, took me 35 years to feel that way. Is anybody else there? Like you wake up and you're like, I have freedom in myself. I know exactly who I am, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. Not for anybody else, no other limiting belief. Of course, we all have things to continue to work on, but just, yeah, it's, and I don't say that to like, say, look at me, but it's, (laughs) it's, it's just, I think it is the ultimate truth and the ultimate marker for success. Yeah. Would you be, would did you know how to define what that freedom is? It's really by kind of defining knots because up until I turned 35, um, I had these ideas of what I was supposed to be doing, of what was right, what was wrong, what I'm supposed to be doing with my life, even in the ways that I already kind of created for myself. At that point, I had already been an entrepreneur and doing my own thing for three, four years. Um, so it sounds weird. I'm making my own life, making my own living, but even inside of a world of my creation, Mm -hmm. I have these parameters Mm -hmm. that are not mine. Mm -hmm. Uh, They like snuck their way in. Yeah. Culture, religion, past upbringing. Exactly. Past relationships, limiting beliefs, or just even my own kind of, uh, uncertainty around my own potential. Yeah. Um, and so like, it's, I think that's the most liberating thing. And it's not like the end all be all, Hey, here are all the answers to your life, to your profession, to your work, but it's just, you're finally at the most real, fresh, uh, starting line. Yeah. I think the ultimate, so much of the work that I do in like my keynotes and my presentations is the ultimate moment. I feel like, well, there's a couple that really define freedom um, is, you know, I alluded to this inner ache that something is missing and that created such a drive. I'll show you a mentality. I'll prove to the world. I'll go and I'll run as fast as I can, as hard as I can for as long as I can. And eventually that led me to, you know, outstretching my capacity Mm -hmm. and losing myself in the process. And I think, um, I used to wake up and the life that I had is not the life that I wanted, despite how hard I was working. I always felt (laughs) one step behind. I always felt um, while it was happening for everyone else, I'm sitting over here waiting for it to be my turn. And you're literally on the field and still feeling like, oh, yeah, yeah, because it has nothing. It has nothing to do with my internal or my external work has everything to do with that internal landscape. Um, but I always felt that experience that like, no matter how hard I'm working, the, I'm, I'm still coming up mm-hmm. short. And um, it brought me to that place of like feeling the type of tiredness that more sleep doesn't solve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I knew something had to change. And when I left L.A., when my partner and I left L.A. and we got to Nashville, Tennessee, where we live Hi, now. Hi, Kara. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, babe. <laughs> um, um, I remember... You know, I was having this conversation with her and I've I've dealt with a lot of mental health challenges through my life. And I was sitting on the couch and it was it was before we left L.A. and I I was just wildly depressed. 
and I couldn't move from the couch. I was drinking my weight in Bud Light. <laughs> um, I was just not, you know, my best self. Mm. And it hit me one afternoon where I realized that I wasn't depressed. I was just grieving. Mm. I was grieving when I moved to LA, I thought of all the ways that my life was gonna change. I came here with the intention that I would finally find what I was looking for. Said everyone ever when they decided to move come to LA. LA. Absolutely, uh, right? Yeah. And I realized <laughs> that LA did exactly what it was supposed to be and do for me in my life. Just um, not the way maybe you No, had absolutely or not. I thought that the spiritual journey mm -hmm. was, because we see it on Instagram every day, if you heal your belief systems, you can go from six figures to seven figures on your first launch. And so all of this language around healing has been used to optimize our lives for a bigger and better life, which mm -hmm. is honestly the antithesis of the spiritual work. It's mm -hmm. the antithesis of the deep healing work. And that might be, you know, you know, a sensitive topic for some people. Do I think that the byproduct of healing is expansion? Absolutely. But I say all that because the ultimate manifestation of freedom is I realized I was grieving all of the ways that I thought my life was going to change, but never did, which led me to a surrender, which mm -hmm. led me to a radical acceptance. And when I got to uh, Nashville, a radical acceptance of who I am and where I am, when I got to Nashville, I remember about two months in, um, I actually had just finished my first microdosing protocol oh, yeah, yeah. of psilocybin. And it, it was a wild journey for me where I felt all this stuff just surfacing. And I was laying on a yoga mat one morning. And for whatever reason, this, this morning, it was different as I lay there because it was the first time that I was so um, uh, just intimately aware of the ground beneath me supporting me. Mm. And as I laid there, I began to have this experience where I just started to cry because it was arguably Chase the first time in my life where I would say that there was no other place I'd rather be than where exactly where I was. Exactly where you're supposed to be. Right. There was Trademark no Chase other twenty twenty. <laughs> there was no other world that I wanted yeah. to live in other than the world that I was in in the here and now. And it's the first time I've ever experienced that. And I would say that that really was like this this ultimate freedom for my life. And what I try to communicate through all my keynotes and my messaging and my work is my life changed in the most profound ways when I realized that my starting point mm. is that I'm already there. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, holy shit, I have been running and I've been chasing and I've been climbing and I've been hustling all of these things to go, go in the upward trajectory to build this bigger and better life, but it was never fucking enough until I actually realized that I was avoiding the ache and calling it ambition. Mm -hmm. I was avoiding the ache and calling it the hustle. You know, Barbara Brown Taylor was one of my favorite spiritual teachers and authors and writers, and she has this profound quote, so simple, and she says, it's not the sadness that sinks a person's life. It's the energy we spend avoiding sadness that sinks a person's life. So I'll say, that, man. it's not the ache that was going to sink my life. It was the energy I was spending avoiding the ache that was sinking my life. And that's energy that I was spending avoiding the ache. I called it the hustle. I called mm -hmm. it ambition. I called it success. I called it all those things. But it wasn't. It was the avoidance of stillness because in my stillness, I had to feel the very hard things in my life. And so it wasn't until I went into my ache that I actually began to see that Everything that I've been chasing, everything that I've been looking for, holy shit, it's been with me all along. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the ground that I've been trying to attain mm -hmm. is actually the ground that I've been standing on. And yeah. that just brings so much liberation, so much freedom, um, and it completely changes the way that you do and see life. That, I said a lot. No, no, that's great. And that's kind of how I would even follow up your question to me of, you know, I'm saying that I'm in freedom now the last yeah, couple yeah. of years. And I first said by a lot of knots, like this is what it doesn't look like, what it doesn't feel like. Yeah. But the other side of that is 100% what Caleb just said. And, and that's just the realization that I'm here. I've been here all along. The thing that I've been chasing, the me, the version of me that I've been chasing or even actively or passively chasing, yeah. um, it has been me in yeah. here all along. It's just what has been required of me, what is going to be required of me to realize that. Sure. And to just, instead of go, 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 which has its time and place, everybody here is in a go, go, yeah. go mode in times and places. But it's when like you, 
choose to get still and choose to get quiet yeah. and choose to like really lean into when the most discomfort most likely is going to happen. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm alone the most, when I'm still and quiet the most, that's when my head and my heart are always in a tug of war. And it's like, who's right? Who's wrong? <laughs> what are we going to choose? Um, what are we going to chase after? You know, are we going to go? Or are we going to be still? Are we going to dwell on the past? Or are we yeah. going to chase the future? Um, and that has just been, it's like just a unraveling of awareness. That's the way of saying unraveling of awareness. Um, I think it, I used to get so angry because we hear it all the time and we've heard it before. Like, you know, what you're looking for is already with you. Like it's already in you. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, what the hell does that mean? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah. like screw off. Mm -hmm. And if you like, the frustration that comes with that is the gift. Mm -hmm. So like that frustration that comes with that, like that's actually what you're looking for, not the more success or the next thing that mm -hmm. you're doing. It's about, I think there comes a time when we have to learn how to move our lives forward, not by doing more, but by learning how to resist less. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? At some point, I feel like as entrepreneur, as people, um, when we've taken our lives as far as that we can take it and we know that doing more is not the answer, um, like how do we move our lives forward from this place? Mm -hmm. And I think what we have to begin to realize is the emotional response that we have in situations when we're waking up in the life that we have is not the life that we want. When we're waking up and we still feel one you know, step behind, when we're waking up and things aren't turning out the way that we're turning out, it's not about figuring it out and figuring out the next step. It's about being fucking present with what surfaces. That is the gift of the situation. And so if you can actually learn how to befriend mm. that and get well acquainted with that, like your life is going to be able to expand because what you're doing is you're finally integrating the masculine mm. and the feminine. You're becoming a whole person. You're bringing all of the energy to the table. And that's what really takes your life to this next level. That's how you can make that quantum jump, quantum leap, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what these gurus are calling it these days. The, the show is back, by the way, quantum leap. They're, okay. doing, they're doing a reboot, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, I haven't seen it. But. Okay. <laughs> but that's how you can like really, you know, up level your life. Yeah. And it's not about like the hustle, the go, the do more, the figuring out, the need to figure it out. All of those things, it's, they have their place. But what surfaces in your heart, what surfaces in your life emotionally? And how can you reframe that? How can you move from seeing it as, oh, there must be something wrong with me, or oh, I just haven't healed enough yet, oh, I'm still broken, to actually seeing it as, oh, wow, like Rumi would say, the poet, you know, like treat all vis or emotions as welcome visitors. Mm -hmm. Open up the door, invite them in, put them and give them a seat at the table and listen to what they have to say. Like, let's talk about like, emotional awareness, the peak performance tactic that mm. nobody's really talking about, you know, or like learning how to self-regulate. That's really ultimate peak performance tactics right there. Well, I think what you've been kind of talking about, I, I was even thinking before you said that, like here's an opportunity for everybody here. Cause I know, I know many of you, some of you I'm getting to know still, thank you so much for joining us first time here this month. Um, pretty much everyone has something that you're here to work on as sure. like a personal endeavor, um, you're working through something to level up in yourself, but also in your work, uh, whether that's your own business or for somebody else. Um, tactically speaking, taking the self work and putting it into the professional lens. I mean, just imagine that like, here's an opportunity to choose. I want to accomplish more. I want to be more. I want to solve these problems. Just play along, choose to not do more, choose to actually do less. What if I, instead of go, 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 go try to achieve, 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 accomplish, accomplish, accomplish. Just indulge me. I'm going to sit. I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to make time to do nothing mm -hmm. and see what comes up, mm -hmm. see what practice I can build, habit I can create that is going to allow me to take the right step forward, yeah. to take the right course of action. Yeah. It's called, I would just call it like wise action. Mm -hmm. right? How do we take more grounded, tolerable steps? Because what a lot of us, I think, or what we do is as entrepreneurs, as high performers, as people who are, you know, hungry to change the world or make an impact or do the work that they're called to do, um, we live so, you know, intellectually and in our heads figuring out the next marketing move, the next business move, the next step, the right step. And all of that stuff is wildly important. And I'm saying, like, there's a place for that. But I think that the ultimate transformation and how you begin to create the change 
or and do the work that you want to do in your life and do it from a place of you know that doesn't cost you mm. like doesn't cost it, you don't do it at the expense of yourself so you don't lose yourself in the process because i think that is such a an old way of doing things people who are achieving greatness but mm. losing themselves in the process it's just it's it's no longer i feel like we're on the verge of a, a completely mm-hmm. hard left where it's no longer attractive like people don't want you know, this massive lifestyle at the expense of hating yourself. Can I pause you right yeah. there? I think that's so powerful and important. Important, Like everyone here live and listening later on, like think about something right now that maybe you wish wasn't a characteristic of your life. Maybe whether that's quite literally physically, energy, sleep, body composition, your gym cycle, whatever. Think of anything that you would kind of be like, oh, I wish it was different, I wish it was better. Um, wish I had more hair. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, are you the cause of that? In pursuit of what you are after, are you making yourself collateral damage? And certain things are going to have to happen like that. I mean, your mm-hmm. time, you, you know, I don't even say balance anymore. It's, it's a dance. You got to give sometimes more and other things are going to take a back seat. But I think ultimately to have the life and success and happiness we're after, like we got to be squared away as well. So if we are climbing, 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 but every step higher we take or every step higher we make, we're leaving part of ourself that we don't want. Not like a former version of myself that no longer serves me that I'm choosing, but like as we climb up and get to the top, are we going to want to be at the top of that version of ourselves? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of what we call success, I find from my own personal experience, a lot of what I call success was really just self betrayal, you know, masked as success. Mm. Um, and so, like, what does it look like to create more grounded success in your life? What is yeah? Grounded what success is that? like how do I make more aligned action? How do I, you know, you know, really honor my heart? live according to what my heart is like what i feel to be my truth have those boundaries in my life and make tolerable steps Mm -hmm. you know how do i play the long game with this and realize it's never about the destination it's about truly and i know it's cliche it's who i'm becoming in the process Mm -hmm. of this because if you don't transform your from the inside out along this journey the weight of that success that you're going to experience will fracture your life and that's exactly what happened to me in the NFL. Like the weight of the NFL fractured me because I didn't have the capacity to hold that level of success. The weight life. of your own dream. The, the weight, weight of, of my thing own that dream. you were Absolutely. after the most in life. Yeah. Damn. And so grounded success is just this concept. It's just like, how do I take more tolerable steps that are consciously done from mm-hmm. a place of awareness, intentionality, and not lose myself in the process? Maybe by all metrics and you know, maybe my mentor is telling me that this is the next move that's going to make me. But if I don't feel aligned to it and I'm coming from a place of honesty and you know, I don't have the capacity to make that step or if it doesn't feel right, then you know what? I'm gonna honor my truth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna say no, maybe. Right, or I'm gonna go a different direction. So like it's moving from what I should be doing or what everyone tells me I should be doing and what is my heart saying in this moment. And so that becomes a prerequisite of navigating this journey. It's it's really really learning how to connect to your knowing and live from that place of centeredness yeah. and staying true to that, even when it doesn't make logical sense. Nothing that I did, everybody when I moved to Canada thought that you know I joined a cult <laughs> Um, I'm sure. You know, when I went to when I went to West Point, there's so many amazing, you know, CEOs and VPs and presidents out there doing great things that offered me incredible jobs. And I knew that I could be on this fast track to making a lot of money. uh, But I also knew that it would just be another football in my life. And Mm so I left the game because that's what my heart said I needed to do. Nobody understood why the heck I was doing that. Nobody understood like why I would make that decision. It wasn't a logical move, mm-hmm. but it's what my heart said. And so that was me taking like a, a more tolerable steps towards what I would now say like grounded success. You know, success where it, it doesn't, where I don't lose myself in the process. Yeah. And so I can live more from a place of alignment and also from a place of inner peace, mm-hmm. right? If that success in your life is actually disrupting your inner peace, like let's reorient, let's like reevaluate this situation. And kind of, what we're all talking about now up to this point, you've got a great concept for this term 
called the divine ambush. Like this <laughs> moment when like the almighty, the universe, like your own self, whatever, you're kind of in this the moment. God in you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you like you, you, you're face to face with it all. And it's like this kind of like shit storm. Yeah. Perceived shit storm. Yeah, it's but perceived. But in it is all, all the other stuff all we're talking the magic. about. All um, the magic. Yeah. So the so divine the, ambush. What is it? So this? the divine ambush is just, you know, we've all, we know it's like the disruption that comes. Mm. Like when something on, and it could be happening on a daily basis, you can have these micro divine ambushes, or you can have like these really big divine ambushes where um, usually uh, it's, you know, maybe a, a, a death whether it's a metaphorical death or actually the death, the loss of a loved one, uh, maybe losing your job, maybe losing your funding, you know, the path that you were on com just got absolutely demolished by a hurricane metaphorical, mm -hmm. you know, and like life as you once knew it is not happening like that. And so it's like this divine ambush where life comes knocking on your heart's door and the ground that you were once standing on that was so sturdy and steady uh, with a, a clear focus of where you're headed is now shaky and wobbly and has taken all of your energy just to hold it all together. And that ambush that happens for me, you know, there's been multiple ambushes for me. It's like, you know, the NFL. So on the day, I didn't talk about this, but on the day of my first ever NFL contract signing, the policy that West Point put into place, that the Department of Defense put into place that was allowing me to play in the NFL, literally 35 minutes before I was scheduled to sign my first contract, I was notified by the Pentagon that that contract no longer exists. It's rescinded. And they're like, I, we just didn't think anybody would pull it off. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. Um, and I had to report back to active duty, duty for three years before I could make my way back to the NFL. And so I went to the, you know, I went and played, or I went and served for three years. Um, and it would eternally turned my life upside down. And I didn't see it until obviously in retrospect, looking back that like, oh, this was a divine ambush offering me a an, a an invitation to go deeper into self, to mm -hmm. go deeper into my life. Um, and so these moments I feel like are really missed out on because we immediately rush into trying to fix it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We immediately rush into trying to solve it. Why did this happen? Yeah. Let me, let me fix figure it. Figure it out, figure it out, yeah. figure it out. The need to figure it out is a survival response mm -hmm. and we're not meant to live in survival. And so while that might be true, we miss out on the depth of the magic that is available mm -hmm. to us if we just actually sit with that moment, get curious about that moment, really pay attention to what's surfacing in our hearts, like those inner beliefs, like those inner, mm -hmm. that inner critic, like you'll, you'll find yourself saying things to yourself in the moment of crisis that is gold. And those, some of those things for me was like, see, it never works out for you. See, it always, it works for other people, but not for you. So like the negative self-talk. Right. So like, those are like that, that self-critic is really yeah. highlighting the, the belief systems on, you know, that, that my heart beats to. Like, of course, of course, this would happen. Yeah, of course. Again. See, yeah. like I told you once again, like, holy shit, like when these divine ambushes come around, it's going to highlight, um, you know, the deep rooted beliefs that are more likely rooted in, you know, past pain, trauma, whatever you want to say. Um, that need to be dealt with, mm. that need to be reconciled, that need to be uh, not dealt with, I don't like that language, that need to be accepted mm -hmm. and befriended and alchemized into light. And when you can do that, like, fuck, now we're talking about real unparalleled growth from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel like there needs to be this, this beautiful balance between these external pursuits, but also the internal pursuits um, when things don't go the way that you want them to go. I always thought that my life was going to change by this moment of success, but my life actually changed by befriending the anger, the despair, and the frustration that came as a result of me Dude. never experiencing my life change in the way I thought it was going to change. And that is so paradoxical in today's world, right? Because it's less about doing and more mm. about being. It's less about running and more about sitting still. It's less about you know figuring it out, and it's more about accepting what is. And it's just like, take some time for you to wrap your mind around because it's a completely paradigm shift and it's so paradoxical. Um, but when you get to really taste the freedom that comes from that, you're like, oh, mm. this is what it's been about the whole time. Yeah, dude, uh, for anybody here, I'm gonna beat a dead horse with Ryan Holiday. Um, <laughs> stillness is the key. Get that book, get that book, get that book, get that book. Um, um, I wanna look at our time, just kind of make sure, we're gonna open up for Q and A here in just a few moments, but, um, I don't want to say this. Um, like that 
what you're just describing is like the only reason I'm here doing what I'm doing. Mm. And it sounds weird. Like and I've talked about this before, but it just, every time I say it and just say it out loud again, it just sounds really, really weird that like none of this would be here if it wasn't for quote horrible things happening, mm. death mm. literally. Um, but also like your last kind of point there about um, when things don't go your way. Mm -hmm. And I know people, everyone here has experienced personally and professionally when something doesn't go your way. Um, but I had a really interesting moment of reflection on this. So yesterday was my birthday, I turned 37. And if my original life plan would have played out this week, I would be beginning my retirement from the army. Wow. So I enlisted at 17 and I was like, cool, 20 years, get all these benefits. I'll be, you know, 37, still young. I can chill. I can relax. I can go on to the next thing. And I was talking with May about this yesterday and I just went That's down nuts. this route. It's wild, right? I'm like, what, what would I be? Would I be a first sergeant? Would I have gone <laughs> green to gold? You know, would I be captain major tuning? And like, um, where would I have gone? What were the things I would have seen and done? You know, who were the soldiers that I would have led? Um, that would have been a completely radically different mm -hmm. life. And one that I chose, really the first life I chose for myself when I set out as a young man, a young buck leaving the house, right? But just think about that. Like when life doesn't go our way or we kind of have these, these moments in time where we realize, oh, this week, this month, this, there's this thing going on that I would have been a part of. Mm. And it's like an, immediately it can kind of take us on a negative self-talk self or think about like, oh, why am I not there? Why mm -hmm. is this not my life's plan? Um, but it's just... You're where you're. You're exactly where you're supposed to be, mm. and it, it, all all the things we've been talking about brings me back to just like the choice that we have to choose, mm. and that's to continuously look at. Okay, this is something happening for me, not to me, and whatever I'm thinking, whatever I'm saying, whatever the circumstances are, are the actual teachers in this lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just I say that again just to drive home uh, as a, another reminder for me of like. Honestly, plans don't even fucking matter sometimes, you know? <laughs> um, it's like your intention has to be there and the action has to be there and the awareness has to be there. And then step by step, I think we kind of build the long term. Yeah. But but ultimately, like it doesn't matter because yeah. you're gonna be where you where you're supposed to be anyway. I co-sign this. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, I want to pause there and you know, anybody who has any two cents or thoughts or questions, um, I mean, my whole intent around this was to kind of, you know, I love his kind he's I'm like his biggest divine ambush fanboy. I just love <laughs> that term and that that concept. Um, but also really uh, to paint the bigger picture of connecting the head and the heart. I think so many of us go down and start life thinking, leading with the head, right? Like uh, I think I need to think logically. I need to go to college, get a career, get a job. I need to do all these things. And we kind of act and live out of um, nature and nurture a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually, you know, we have this divine ambush we have this come to Jesus moment or we have this moment where we're just like, I'm sick of this shit. Or you have a really, really positive, happy event that just causes you to think differently. Yeah. And then like all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, this is like coming from here, the heart yeah. instead. Yeah. And then it's not like a, oh, now I can turn my head off because my heart is finally given the permission to like show up and like, I'm going to listen to it. But it's the recognition of like, when do I need to lean into both? When yeah. is, when is which one going to serve me the most? Yeah. Which is, there's no, um, there's no like formula for it. Mm. And this is why self-compassion is so crucial to all of this is because like you're going to, obviously we all know it, make mistakes in the journey. We're going to get things wrong, which is not necessarily wrong. I don't like using that dualistic language, mm -hmm. but we're going to create more suffering in our lives. <laughs> um, and this is why like self, uh, self create more uh, learning opportunities. Yeah, create more yeah. learning opportunity. That's a better way of saying it. Um, that's such a great way of saying it actually. Um, and so self-compassion is yeah. just such an integral piece to all of this. Like you can't hate yourself into the, the, the state of being that you want to experience mm -hmm. in life. You can't do that. You can't hate yourself to where you want to be. You can't be angry at yourself. You can't be mad at yourself um, and actually get to where you want to mm -hmm. be because you'll actually never, you'll never be satisfied and proud of what you accomplish until you're satisfied and proud of who you are. Uh, he's not here with us tonight, but Dom, you'll probably catch the replay. It reminds me, I'm cracking up. Uh, this guy, Dominic, on a recent call, um, we're, kind of, we're talking about something like this with another speaker and he's 
fresh out of college, 23, relatively young guy, and he hasn't experienced a lot of failure, like big failure in life. So he had this amazing question. I had to laugh. He's like, I'm just wondering, like, when am I going to get my big failure? You know, <laughs> when am I going to get my big learning lesson? You know, like I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get in the, uh, fr you know, in front of the ball right now, but you know, yeah. how can <laughs> he was like, but do should I go even, fail hard tomorrow? Yeah. So I can have this, you know, but do you see even like, like we really reduce the, the magic of our, our heart's journey when we turn everything into a performance. Mm. And I think the balancing act in life is to have goals, have dreams, to work hard towards this, this outward achievement that we're going on, but while also balancing, radically accepting who I am, where I am, mm. and living more present in my life here and now. Because we do that at the expense of this, and that's the recipe for disaster. And I think... The ultimate, like that freedom, like the, like our starting point is that we're already here. Like that only comes through radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. That only comes with actually learning how to, to, to give up all other worlds except the one which I am here with now and accept who I am and where I am. And so I just say that because I think it's so critically important that we put energy and effort towards that work of acceptance that work of actually being more present in our daily lives, that work of actually abiding in the here and now, because this is where life is happening. And I, I said this on the podcast earlier, like we, I left LA because I was never in my life. Mm -hmm, mm. I was waiting, I was living, <laughs> I was constantly waiting for my life to happen and missing out on my life now. And it just created Damn. so much misery. And then when I moved to Nashville and started grieving and letting go of all those unmet expectations, that non-finite loss, those unfulfilled dreams, and I was able to accept who I am, where I am, suddenly I'm, I'm connected to my life. Mm. And my life has changed and expanded emotionally, spiritually, relationally, financially, not from the byproduct of more hard work, but actually by, from the byproduct of being more present in my life. Dude, I'm I don't under, understand how it happens, but that <laughs> shit just fucking works. Well, I mean, I wish you were still here, but you know, hey, now we get to go Thank visit you. Nashville. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, I want to take a few moments now. Um, any questions? Any comments? Any moments of relation? You know? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to jump in. Go ahead, bro. Uh, first, I just want to acknowledge both of you guys. Um, you know, you guys are men, right? Like, I'm just looking at you guys. Like, you guys are men, but the fact <laughs> that you can have this kind of conversation and create the space for other men to kind of reflect in this way is mm -hmm. it's just super inspiring. So I, I appreciate you guys for that. Cause Thanks, that's, brother. it's a uh, against, it's against the grain for sure. Uh, but we need more of it. So thank you. Um, as I, so yeah, so Caleb, you said something that was, um, it stuck out to me. Like one of my themes for my life is kind of how do I live more intentionally? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of making, you know, decisions in advance that are congruent with the person I want to be with my best self. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, I was reading between the lines, but I felt like there was some relationship between alignment and doing what you're supposed to do and intentionality, which is actually following through on those things that are meant for you. I'm curious to hear your reflection on how those two concepts might relate or if uh, I'm trying to create, you know, something out of nothing. Can you explain it a little bit more just so I, I feel like I've, I've grasped a full question here? For sure. Yeah. So like when I think of intentionality, yeah. you know, I like, I have a schedule. I'm like, okay, these are the priorities. These are the commitments, sure. the non-negotiables, um, the standards that I have for my life. Right. And I am intentional about enforcing those things, yeah. but how do we know if those things are truly best for us? Right. Cause you're talking about alignment being yeah. more of that flow and more of that purpose. Yeah. So how do we kind of litmus I think, test? Yeah. I think it's a, balance? it's a growing, um, it's growing pains for sure. And it's a, something that you learn along the way. But my first thought is, is as you're making those decisions, you're checking in with your body. Your body doesn't lie, mm. right? All of the trauma is stored in the body. And so as you are being intentional on following through, what is your body saying to you? What are the emotions that's surfacing? How do you feel? And that should be the doorway to better understanding if this is congruent or incongruent, aligned or out of alignment. And so the more you learn how to befriend your emotions, to be present with yourself, to learn, uh, trust your body. I, I, I was the least self-aware person that you've ever met in your life. And for an entire year, what I would do is I would do body scan meditations, one, and I would do body scan practices, meaning I would 
before walking into a Starbucks, I would check in with my body mm-hmm. and I would just take a full account of how I feel from head to toe real quick. And then I'd walk into Starbucks and then I would take a full account of how I felt again 30 seconds after being in Starbucks. And it, it's wild. Like sometimes. moment by moment, moment mindfulness. Moment by moment, mindfulness. But also like you start realizing that a lot of, you know, what your body feels like, especially out in, in the world, isn't isn't yours. It's not your energy. It's energy that you're picking up on. And so I just started to really understand what was me and what was not me. And then as I'm being intentional with my day to day and here's my non-negotiables, here's what I got to do, you know, and then I'm, I am. Is it coming from a place of alignment? So is it coming from like, is my what is my body saying as I'm stepping into this intentionality? Right. And just paying attention to that, because if your body is wreaking havoc or if your body is going, wing, 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 that's my best, my best example. Yeah, so <laughs> I, mean, it's, it's, it, I guess to, if I'm to summarize that, it's kind of your body from an emotional being where it's like, how does this, it's not yeah. necessarily like you're going to get hives or. No, gonna, well, you, know, you could, it, you could. Dude, I, 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 before I met my partner, I was in a pretty toxic relationship and I didn't know how to honor my body in terms of what I was feeling. And, and this has nothing to do with her. This is just a, the wrong relationship. She's not a bad person. This was just the wrong relationship. I would lay down next to the girl that I was dating at the time and I would literally have anxiety attacks. Mm. And my body would break out in hives. And I thought there was just something wrong with my fucking diet. Am I allergic to these sheets? What's <laughs> right? happening? Or something. But my body was telling me something like this relationship is out of alignment. And I just needed to honor that. And I finally did because it was breaking me. And when I stepped away from that relationship, um, ma- things mass, I created capacity for a lot of big changes in my life. We started hanging out more. Yeah. yeah. So I it can to answer your question. And this is a long ass answer. Mm-hmm. I apologize. It can be actual hives or, you know, rashes or that physio- physical symptoms in your body, but also just like, how does this decision that you're about to make, what do you feel? Are you motivated? Do you feel passionate about it? Like, are you inspired? Are you excited? Um, or are you dreading it? Mm. Are you hating it? Resenting are you doing, it. are you resenting it? Are you doing it out of duty and obligation? Or is this something that is actually inspired action? Like, so what does it feel? And I think as you honor that, it just leads to more alignment because what you say yes to, you're saying no to something else. And if it's not aligned, right, then you can say, okay, what's a better way of doing this? Or what's a different way of doing this? Or how do I shift and uh, adjust accordingly? And I'll, I'll piggyback off of that and say, if maybe the struggle, because a lot of these concepts, like new things maybe for some of us, uh, and so it's like, I got to remember to do it. I got to create the habit, right? So on the back end, I like, I will say, get something that's going to do that for you. And here's nerd chase coming out. Um, quite literally, you can measure these things through like a wearable, uh, whoop, Apple watch, so many great smart devices, like for, you know, eight sleep and chili sleep, um, get something that can do it for you until it becomes a, uh, on the front side habit. Case in point, I've talked about with a lot of you guys about how, um, I began to measure, downtime and doing nothing. And really what I was doing in that downtime and doing nothing, I was filling with quality time with people not working. And I began to pay attention to the data in terms of my heart rate variability increased. Yeah, that's big. My sleep and recovery went up and I'm, I'm pretty regimented and everything else. I'm like, shit, the only thing really that was different yesterday or this last week was I intentionally closed the laptop. I intentionally went outside. I intentionally connected with nature, had quality time with other human beings. Um, and that will still work the same way. So it's like, you can have the intention and awareness going in to kind of do that scan and change the energy and choose how you're going to show up in the world, but also just measure it and then take note of how you can manipulate and change yeah. it on the back end. I, I, I want to open up any other questions, but just to give you a real world example, when I start, I started keynote speaking or public speaking four years ago. I do a full time. You know, last year I did like seventy five engagements, Ooh. and I started out in schools, um, and I and I and I still do schools today, case by case. Um, but I knew that I had to take a big leap, and I was actually you were at my house in Nashville as I was processing this, mm-hmm. and I knew that I wanted to take a big leap and get into more corporate engagements. Um, just because a it felt more aligned and the money is better, <laughs> but I had to. I, I, I found myself, and it. 
I found myself in a place where I knew speaking in high schools or in schools were it was no longer it was out of alignment. And because when I first addressed that, when I first stepped into that work, I was inspired, I was passionate, I was excited, right? And then more recently, as I'm still making this transition, more recently, as I approach this intentional steps that I need to take today, the intentional day by day things that I need to do, whether it's marketing or prospecting or cold call or whatever it might be, there's no peace. I hate it. Like, it's just like, it's like, ugh. I'm doing it out of a mere obligation to make money. And now suddenly it's wildly apparent to me that this is out of alignment. Mm-hmm. And my body is telling me that if you want to create space for this new thing, you're going to have to be willing to let go of some security. You're going to have to be willing to let go and say no to some things that are out of alignment. Hope that makes Appreciate sense. Appreciate that, guys. Great yeah. question, Brian. Thank Huge. you. Huge. Thanks, man. Anybody else can you can relate to this stuff? Anything kind of uh, set something off for you? I sort of have a related question to Brian's question. Um, so you hear like a lot about nowadays, like leaning into discomfort and pushing yourself. And like, you know, Jordan Peterson will talk about taking on responsibility or Jocko will talk about like, you know, um, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. So how did, how do you differentiate the feeling, the negative feeling that you get of being out of alignment from just being anxious, being nervous because you're in that like growth period. How do you know, like, it's a great, how do you say like, Ooh, this is wrong versus this might be right, but it, but it hurts. Yeah. It's a really great question. Um, and there's not a, I don't feel like I don't have a, a clear answer for that. Um, I just find through my personal experience, um, the more you befriend yourself, the more that you sit with your feelings and you sit with your emotions, the more that you turn inward, I it be, gets it gets more and more clear that this is out of alignment and this is actually an edge that I'm leaning into. Ooh, Ooh I like because that. they they look the same, yeah. they feel the same, but as you become more acquainted with, intimately acquainted with just you, as you do this work, that just becomes so clear. Like, man. Uh, this is out of alignment because it's creating and wreaking havoc on my nervous system, or this is like just an edge that I'm leaning into in this discomfort. And I'm actually what's surfacing is fear right now. Right. And I think maybe there's an answer right there. I, that if you, you, you can tell a difference between this actually wreaking havoc on your nervous system versus just the discomfort of fear or those growing pains as you lean into those edges. Um, and I just, again, it, it becomes more and more clear as you continue to just lean down in your own journey to live an emotionally honest life. So befriend whatever surfaces in your life, sit with it, get curious about it, journal about it, whatever, just be present, be more aware of it. Just be aware of it, just start there. And as you do that, you'll start to really be able to separate the two. Um, it's a great question. Though. I don't know if this was a question, but a statement I want to kind of bring up. Um, Brandon was, um, said that uh, I'm, in, I'm a real estate agent. I feel like I'm go, go, go. I need to prove my hate, my yeah. haters. What's your take on that, man? That I prove I got to prove to my haters. Uh, thanks for saying um, that. Yeah, thank you, Brandon. Uh, would you mind Would you mind to kind of maybe expand on that a little bit? Um, just share a little bit more behind it, and or is there like a direct question behind it, or how can we support that? Um, yeah, I mean, it was like more like of like a statement, you know, like I had people tell me, oh, why don't you just go get an old five or, you know, you're fucking lazy or, you know, why are you doing this? You know, or you're going to be back at this brokerage, keep your keep your business cards. And, you know, I I left my current brokerage and I just closed the deal yesterday. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, thank you. Um so, you know, I feel like I always have to like prove my haters wrong. I feel like they're saying that because that's what they were told. That's what they were told. And they, for whatever reason, have not um, done the work to recognize that that's not true. Um, or for whatever reason, they don't feel like probably I'm, I'm, I'm assuming here, I don't know that they're not at a place to where like they've made it to prove to themselves. And so anybody outside of that is going to be competition or like, why would you even bother? I feel like it's just like a, probably a negative cycle that they're repeating. Yeah. And so Brandon, you said you left your brokerage. Yes, I did. Okay. And so you're off on your own. 
No, I'm I'm with another company. Okay. Um, you have to, you, you do have to hang your license. Mm. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, I think proving your haters wrong, uh, how you say it, I think that's fine. Um, if that's what motivates you right now, uh, let it motivate you. Like, let it be the source of your motivation and let it drive you. Um, but just know that proving your haters wrong, the energy used to move your life forward, to prove your haters wrong, you're really missing out on an opportunity for the energy to move your life forward to really make a big difference. And it's just the matter of intention behind why you do what you do. One is going to lead to you know, more chaos because you're sourcing your actions right now from a place of fear. And what you source your actions from is what you always end up with. So what you start with is what you finish with. So if you're sourcing your actions to prove other people wrong, right? It's probably because you, you know, there was, I would just add, like, is there a fear attached to that? The fear of not measuring up, the fear of not being enough, the fear of failure, right? Let me prove other people wrong, but is that just masquerading a fear? And if you're sourcing your daily actions from a place of fear, Brandon, the challenge with that is no matter how much you work and no matter how much you do, you're still going to end up with fear. And so it's never going to be enough. There's always going to be an inner battle. You're never going to have inner peace. And so at some point, that's fine that you're doing that now. I would just encourage you to, to what would it look like to source your actions from a different place, from a more aligned, grounded place? Does that make sense? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. If it's working for you now, man, let it, let yeah. it run with it. It's just not sustainable. Maybe I should say that. If y'all haven't noticed yet, I use a lot of words for what would be a very simple sentence. <laughs> I, I think also like if if we continuously act to try to prove others wrong, yeah. ultimately you're going to realize, how do I know what's right for me? Because you've only been doing, going, creating out of showing others how they're wrong. Like, do you even know what your right is? Yeah. You know? That's good. Thank you, Brandon. Very much. Thank you. Anybody else? I don't have a question, but I just wanted to just acknowledge the appreciation I have for both of you putting this on your story. Um, I really, really deeply resonated with very similar to the journey that I've been experiencing myself. And I wouldn't say that I have reached a level of freedom like you both said at the beginning. But I would say I'm probably as close to that as I've ever been in my life. Amazing. Which has come from, you, you said it, and it's what my therapist is, we've worked with a lot, is just like radical acceptance around when I first started to get into a lot of this, it was coming from the place of, I need to work on myself because that's what's going to springboard my business yeah, success. There you go. And it wasn't, it was like years until getting to the point of like, no, I need to work on myself so that those things don't matter. Anymore. Come on. And coming back <laughs> into Come that on. radical, radical, radical acceptance was something that I thought I knew what acceptance was. Yeah. I thought I knew what awareness was, but yeah, that, that journey uh, really, really resonated with me. Like I've been an entrepreneur yeah. for over 17 years. I'd actually just recorded a podcast. It was like very similar to kind of what both of you talked about, just sharing a lot of this, I think it's so important to normalize this conversation for mm -hmm. other men because it's mm -hmm. things that do not get talked about. Yeah, It's always trying to achieve or doing these things to attain the outcome. Mm -hmm. Even in most personal development, when it's coming from somebody who is a successful entrepreneur, it is tied back to An outcome. you can expand once you center yourself. Yes. And it's like, well, no, that's still not coming from the right place. So I just wanted to just thank you for, for everything today. Dude, that's powerful. That's really, really powerful. Um, a guiding question that I'd always ask, especially when I got out to LA, I'd always ask this question, like if my life never changed from this moment forward, is it enough? And the question, the answer was always, hell no. Like, no, it's just <laughs> not enough. Like, there's something missing. I got to do more. I got to I gotta achieve more, whatever. Um, it's funny. On June 9th, 2019, I actually have it tattooed on my arm. And it says, you know, June 9th, 2019 is finally enough. Mm. 
Mm. Um, and it was just a moment that like, wow. as I was, you know, working through my grief and my despair and letting go, surrendering and learning how to accept myself and step and embody that radical acceptance and integrate that into my daily life. I had a moment actually, um, driving down the one and I was listening to the bleachers and my windows were down and the wind was just hitting me perfectly in my Flowing hair. in your hair, yeah. <laughs> yeah not, not existent. <laughs> but I just had a moment, I was like, fuck, like mm. if my life never changes from this moment forward, it's good. Like it's enough. Mm. And that was just, uh, man, a, bre- a, a, a massive monumental shift. So good for you on working on the acceptance for the sake of being more present in the here and now, not for the the bigger and better life. So true. Because the bigger and better life can come as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. But again, you don't need the bigger and better life as you once thought you did. And that changes everything. That's been a great marker for me, actually. I've been kind of catching myself. I think it just kind of happened to come up, but now it's turned into like a a conscious question or a conscious uh, marker where, let's say like a new opportunity comes down my way or... um, whatever, usually professionally speaking, like here's an opportunity for me to generate more income, to create more opportunity for myself and my business, my family. I'm, I've gotten better at allowing myself, giving my giving myself permission, to just be like, revel in that for like a second. Yeah. Like that's really, really cool. And there's a lot of gratitude that you can have and should have and do have. But then also I've been checking myself and really asking, is this necessary? Do, like, is more better. Mm. Okay, cool. Here's some here's some more dollar signs. Here's some more opportunities. Um, but will that significantly make my life better? Is it necessary? Yeah. And I'll be totally honest. Like, sure, who wouldn't like to make more money? Who wouldn't like to have more opportunities? But like, honestly, where I'm at in life right now, like, I'm happy. I'm good. Thank God. Knock on wood. Uh, roof over my head. <laughs> my wife loves her job. We ha- we love our life. You know, we're happy, and, and you know, we're able to live the life that we want. A little more would be a little more, of course. But I've been really asking myself, and I think it's a powerful question that can work kind of synchronic synchronicously. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, kind of maybe Brian, what you were saying earlier about kind of things running in parallel of like being a way to kind of really check. Um, is this going to cost myself more along the way? Mm-hmm. Am I stepping down this endeavor for the right reasons? Do I even know a reason? Is it even fully necessary or is it just the sake of more for the sake of being more? Yeah. Would y'all all all say that you have, uh, sorry if I'm- No, no, I'm good. Would you all say that you know why, would you all say that you know the emotional attachment to the outcome that you're trying to achieve in your Mm. life? Good question. Like it's like what's the feeling associated yeah, to this, my success? Yeah, like what are you actually looking for mm. in the pursuit of whatever it is that you're after? Like for me, it was never about the NFL. Like I was chasing this NFL and I realized this in my life that what I was actually chasing my entire life was a a sense of inner peace. Mm. It was to it was reconciling the ache and feeling wholeness, like feeling at peace with who I am and where I am. Like I've been chasing inner peace. Mm or safety my entire life. And I just was taught to believe that if I just get there, that big life, I'll finally feel at peace. But it's obviously a lie. It actually, when you get to the big life, you have to sustain the big life and it actually creates more chaos and there's no fucking peace in it. Mm. And so when I realized that what I was actually after was what football represented. And when I realized what it represented, I looked inward and started to ask myself, why can I feel that here and now? and then started working on actually cultivating that emotional response in me here and now. And that just changes everything because I think a lot of times, sometimes, you know, why we feel out of alignment with our intentional actions is that we're doing things that we think we're supposed to be doing, but if we actually had the experience of what we're looking for here and now, it, it changes what we do and why we do the things that we do. We might not spend so much time and energy on X, Y, and Z, uh, mm-hmm. When we realize that, oh, I can I can focus here first and create that emotional response in me. Does that make sense? So I, I would just encourage you if you don't have like, like if you're building that, you know, real estate business, if you're building, I don't know, whatever it else you're, it is you're doing, like, what is that? Like, is it for safety? Is it for security? Is it for control? Is it for, you know, f- more freedom? Right, like, what is that emotional experience attached to why you? And, do? and don't judge that emotion. No, it's not like, a bad thing. It's th- not a bad thing because something might rise up. You, you just said, you know, like control. Like 
some uh, might say like, you know, it's bad to have control. No, I want to control no the parameters of my life. Exactly. I want to control my day to day. I yeah. want to like have more control in my life. So I'm not like, you know, forfeiting my time with, you know, giving it off to other people or whatever it is. Like, how do you create that emotional experience in you here and now? Because what if we're if we're trying to find significance, right? If that's a big one for me, like it was never about, you know, to say the NFL, it was about significance, right? Until I learn how to create significance here, right? My significance would always be attached to something outside of myself. And that's what we would call in the relationship world, a codependent relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. I need this thing in my life so I feel better about myself. I need this thing in my life so I feel this way. Right. But now suddenly our relationship to the thing that we're doing is codependent and it's not actually healthy. And that's when chaos can, you know, come as a result of that. And so I think it's just important that you recognize what are you actually chasing after and how can I start creating that here? That um, reminds me actually of something like to peel the curtains back a little bit on uh, my relationship, my marriage like that, honestly, I think was, I say that's just to kind of shine a light on, it's important to work on this self because whether we're trying to grow a business or whatever, like where, wherever we go, there we are kind of thing. And especially in the relationships, if you have an intimate relationship, this also equally matters. That's kind of really how my relationship with May was so solidified. Mm. You know, people ask like, how do you know he's the one, she's the one. Well, I kind of, I'll say, well, I just knew. <laughs> um, but then again, it's like when you have like this real brutal, honest moment of like, I don't need you. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, choosing yeah, 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 you. Yeah, that's big. And that sounds kind of weird to say, yeah. and, but her and I will say it right now. It's like, look, God forbid something happens or whatever, but like, it, like we're here with each other because we're choosing to yes. because of the individuals that are growing with each other. And like, there's no codependency there. And especially if you can have that with yourself and in a relationship, yeah, it's big. It's huge. It's the most a important way of putting thing. it. Yeah. Um, love you, baby. If you're listening, uh, <laughs> please don't leave me. <laughs> um, but dude, like, seriously, and one other thing I'll say here is just why I think the work on the self is so important beyond what it inevitably is going to do for you is the unknown ripple effects that it will have on other human beings. Mm -hmm. Case in point, I'm gonna toot toot, Caleb. <laughs> Caleb is one of the several people that have been, again, instrumental in my life the last couple of years, really by doing you, mm -hmm. by working on you and holding space for you, and in doing so, pushing a little bit, testing the waters, creating, uh, unbeknownst to me, healthy boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> where of like, you know, hey, we can still be in each other's lives. And, you know, we're going to, you know, like I said, push the envelope a little bit. But like it doesn't my growth isn't dependent on your growth. Sure. And your growth isn't dependent on my growth. But we're like we're you're recognizing that. Um, and I think why, again, it's so important for all of us to have these practices to help ourselves is that it does ripple out into the lives of other people and a relationship you have, a coworker, whoever could be made significantly better and could be cracked wide open in ways that you had no idea were possible because of your choice to do these things like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think that's like the coolest fucking thing ever is when someone comes up to you and they're like, what you've been doing, whether you realize it or not, has had A, B, C, X effect in my life. And then also I think it kind of, it's like a validation as well, maybe in a way of like, cool, not only like does this like it's good to know that you're recognizing this i'll take this thank you for the gift but also yeah. like you're now both at a new level i think yeah yeah you see differently and you honor each other differently uh and i think also to that same point it's uh it, it deep when you deepen your sense of self you deepen your relationships and Truly, when you yeah. deepen your relationships you deepen your quality of life right and that's really big and so yeah man um Gabriel, I just see a couple of people have to bounce. So that's my cue. We're probably getting ready for everybody to head out. But um, to everyone that's new, thank you so much for tuning in. For everyone that's been with us so far, thank you again so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to share this replay with everybody within 24 hours. Um, I will tell you all here, but I'll also put it in the email, um, just because of the nature of where we are and having a nice studio and stuff. Uh, I would like to use this as an upcoming podcast episode. But of course, if 
anyone, any one single person, you don't have to raise your hand now, like ha, would not like that for whatever reason, then I won't. Um, but I'll put this all in the email follow up. Um, I just, you delivered, man. And you all delivered. Thank you so much for your input. I just, I just, I think this was a really important, necessary conversation. I would like to put it out there more. Um, so stay tuned for the email. I'll follow up with a replay. And if anybody has any objections for whatever reason, you don't even need to tell me what it is. Uh, this will just stay within the group. Um, Caleb is at Caleb Campbell. Uh, IG, is that right? On Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Oh, at, is there, at Caleb underscore Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll include all yeah. of this stuff uh, <laughs> in the follow-up. Uh, his website is CalebCampbell.me. Yeah. Um, his wife is amazing, Kara Campbell. They do so much cool stuff out in the world. Um, <laughs> Kara, a baby right I'm now. hungry, by the way. She, she's the best cook. <laughs> she's the best. Um, but thank you all so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you all, all so, much. so much. So nice meeting you all. Thanks for showing up. Good night, everybody. Bless you guys.